This is my recently well-functioning girlfriend's computer, with a Ryzen 5 2600, a B350 Tomahawk from MSI, 16GB of RAM, and now with an RX 5500 XT 8GB that followed the older RX 570. And I say recently because this computer was one of the biggest pain in the ass, the, one of the biggest pains in the ass that I've ever had when building computers. What were the problems? Well, well, for example, from time to time we actually had some random system reboots and I know that you might be thinking about system stability and I can already tell you that, well, not quite. As I do with all my computers, when I overclock them, being in terms of CPU, RAM or GPU, I stress test them in order to ensure that the system is stable. In this case, I used Prime95 for the CPU and TM5 for the RAM. And I tested everything at stock as well in order to make sure that everything was alright and the issues were still there. But once again, what were the problems exactly? Like I said before, random reboots, a consistent crash that would just happen on the first cold boot, so when turning on the computer after several hours, and the most annoying one was definitely the USB problems. Where the USB connections would malfunction from time to time, and the wireless internet wireless adapter would actually turn itself off for several minutes, or at least for one minute every half an hour, let's say. And let me tell you right now that if you're having these same issues, I can already tell you that this video might actually help you or may help you somehow because in all these years of experience that, I've, that I ha actually have uh, building computers, I never experienced such an odd thing. So now, I'll tell you what I did. But before... Nani? Today's sponsor is Maximum, Maximum Settings, Settings, a cloud-based gaming service where you won't need to spend thousands of dollars to upgrade your PC or a personal nuclear plant to boot up your system. Just do it! And for as low as 9.95 Canadian dollars a month, you can play the most recent games on your computer, even if your hardware isn't prepared. And if you don't play that much, well, you can just use the hourly system for as little as 0.35 Canadian dollars. Sign up today for your full Linux gaming PC with no resource sharing and start enjoying high-level gaming on any PC. So, to troubleshoot the issue, I started by changing the power supply in the system. It was an old Corsair CV something that was making a lot of noise already, and since we did have some USB issues, I suspected it could be indeed the power supply. But after changing it to a much better one, the EVGA 650 watts gold, I believe, the problems persisted. So I thought to myself once again, well, if the power supply isn't the issue, maybe the motherboard is the issue since we have USB problems and I actually bought the motherboard second hand. So I changed the motherboard and BAM the problems went away. I even made this video that you're seeing right now in the screen telling you that the motherboard was indeed the issue, but I was wrong. Some weeks after I made that same video, the computer started showing once again the signs of those same problems that it had before. So the problems basically came back, even with a new motherboard. And I did know that the motherboard was working because I had that motherboard in several systems before and it was rock solid. You're teasing me, you naughty naughty. <laughs> So over a month ago, before going into vacations, I actually told my girlfriend to bring the computer here once again uh, because I really wanted to try again to see if I could actually fix the problem. So I stress tested everything one more time and everything was rock stable. It was basically fine, but it still had those same issues as before. So I was, as I was thinking of changing once again the motherboard due to the USB issues and so on, I thought to myself that it could also be the case due to maybe some short circuit, 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 I believe that's how it's pronounced. I, I do like to say circuit. Uh, I believed that the issue was actually a circuit um, and and as I was, th I was thinking about that, I thought to myself, what about the RAM? What if, although the RAM is stable, it isn't stable? It all makes sense now. And guys, it was the mother RAM kit. Although it was stable in all benchmarks and stress tests and everything, it was messing with the whole system for years. <laughs>
And as soon as I changed the RAM kit, well, the system would boot even faster, the system booted even faster, and the wireless internet adapter would almost instantly connect to the internet, well, before it took over 30 seconds to do so. No more random reboots, no more system crashes while cold booting, uh, no more USB issues, everything was working fine. And now, yes, after over a month, the system is rock solid, with no absolute issues and working as it should from day one. The RAM. The RAM. And I actually had a similar experience recently with my DDR5 kit on my Ryzen 7 7700X, where the system was fully stable, but when rebooting the computer, I would always get stuck in a black screen. The computer worked flawlessly, booted fine, but as soon as I tried to reboot the computer, the system would land in a black screen, where I had to force shut down the computer. And as soon as I got a new Expo kit, a new DDR5 Expo kit, the problems went away. No more issues with cold booting, or in this case, no more issues with rebooting. The system just works flawlessly. Once again, it was stable, but it wasn't stable. I even tried that older Trident Z5 kit that I have uh, on this same motherboard, the, um, the ASRock B650E Tai Chi that you can see in this video passing right now in the screen. And even though it didn't have that issue all the time, it did have the issue sometimes, some reboots, the, the system would just complete, go com completely nuts and uh, the BIOS would clear itself off, so uh, basically a clear CMOS without my consent, um, it would go completely nuts and as I soon, uh, as soon and as soon, sorry, as I changed that same RAM kit, uh, that Trident Z RAM kit for another app Expo kit that I had uh, laying laying there, uh, it was just a 16 gigabytes kit, but as soon as I changed, the problems went away as well, and everything is working fine. Once again, if you're having issues even with USB malfunctioning, it, uh, it might actually be the RAM, even if you stress test the RAM, and if everything is alright, even if you run it at stock, and everything seems to be alright, it might actually be the RAM kit causing all these odd issues. Damn. And well, that's all for today's story tale video. Thanks a lot for following the video. Thanks a lot for watching. And I really hope I, I helped you with my experience because I myself didn't believe that the issue could actually be the RAM kit if it was stress tested more than, than 10 times and it was perfectly fine. But it seems that, well, it wasn't. Because as soon as, once again, as I changed to another RAM kit, bam, all the problems went away. Crazy. Thanks a lot for watching and see you in the next video. By the way, I'm testing PCI Express 1 versus 2 versus 3 versus 4 with the RX 7900 XTX because I really want to know, for example, if PCI Express 3 um, is dead yet, if it is, well, just dead in the water by 2023 or not really. Thanks a lot and see you in the next video.